Welcome back to the Balance Bully Podcast for ambitious women in business and a few brave men. I'm your host, Nikita Renthigpen. Thrilled to be in the place with you today. Listen, I know so many of you listening to this and writing in and sending us DMs have been talking about the wackiness that is the world of transition and job loss and all the things that are happening in your careers and, of course, impacting your clients. For those of you who are entrepreneurs or what we call careerpreneurs, you analytical creatives that are really gifted at walking in both worlds. Everyone is impacted by this. We're not pretending that we're not aware of this. We want to give you everything that you can have so you can balance, pun intended for the name of the show, guys, balance boldly. So today, it is my honor to bring to you this magical woman who, for some unknown angelic reason, has decided to take All of her aptitude, acumen, and skill that she has from uh, seeing 100,000 plus resumes and reviewing 40,000 applications at old school Corn Ferry, where she used to work back in the day because she is a serial entrepreneur and she has so many skills and gifts. And she has decided to help you help your young people. I'm still trying to figure out why she chose this. But we believe in angels and they are walking among among us. And today, one of the angels' name is Deepali Vies. Welcome to the BBP. How are you today? Oh, my gosh. Uh, Following that introduction, I I hope I can live up to the hype. But thank you. (laughs) I'm truly blessed and honored to, to be here with you. I'm, you know, I've already told you, I'm super excited. I think what you're doing in the world is amazing, especially because you yourself could have taken so many different turns and pivots. You have a repertoire (laughs) underneath of you in terms of all the things that you've seen, done, had to navigate and navigate specifically, especially around rejection, which is a big thing. Like I know your current hat is very centered and focused around the movement of helping the next generation, the young people. And you're not disregarding that those young people have parents that may be struggling, which of course ripples down into an impact with them. And both of those generations are dealing with rejection because of this world that we're in right now with all this heavy transition. Is any of that coming up for you now where the fearless platform that you've created that's changing the game is really centered on helping them navigate as you give them the confidence to level up? Yeah. I mean, I think that's a great question, Akita. I think one of the things that I think about all the time is this transition phase. And I think most people get caught up in the fact that they are, quote, failing or they are being rejected. And I just think that changing their mindset and not really seeing it as rejection, but yeah. as an opportunity to pivot Mm -hmm. Um, The whole reason behind Fearless um, was really off the heels of what I've experienced um, in my life, right? uh, I'm uh, the daughter of two immigrants. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm an immigrant myself. Mm -hmm. Um, It's been quite a journey of what what you call rejections, right? Um, Mm -hmm. And uh, I've sort of climbed my way through it. And of all those lessons learned, I think people in any sort of position, whether you are a parent, whether you're a teenager, these rejections are actually forms of opportunities where it opens other doors. And I feel that uh, for me, bottling my experience and taking it to the younger generation was purely for that. I want people to be fearless about their future. Mm. Do not get so rigid about the fact that you have to do it in this sort of linear way. Um, Everybody's experience has crooked lines. And I, for one, had a very crooked line to get to where I am. And it continues to be crooked because I keep taking pivots. So... Mm -hmm. No, I I honor you for your truth and your vulnerability in that. And God knows I can relate to it on so many different levels. I especially like that you use the word rigidity because the opposite of that is the resilience that you also talk about very often in my professional stalking that I did of you. I'm very clear of that. Um, And I, I understand from a higher level that it's important to be resilient But I know a lot of people listening to this, especially 
with the youth. And I think your kind of sweet spot is that 13 and up Mm -hmm. um, range. These kids, man, they're dealing with so much more. Like we, we always have said things like, you know, same, same game, different players, you know, old school. I'm dating myself a little bit, guys, (laughs) don't judge me. But, you know, we used to say, you know, little statements and platitudes and things around that when kids would say, oh, I had a hard day. And old school parents would say, what do you have hard about? You you had math today. Like what was so frustrating? But they're dealing with social media, cyber bullying, mm-hmm. you know, all kinds of crucifixion in ways that I'm grateful didn't exist when I was a little person acting a good old fool, especially in my, my high school yeah. years. And they're coming to you trying to figure out how do they appease their parents, which I know we'll get into, and honor what they think they know about themselves at mm-hmm. this age, you know, they're still figuring out the figure outable figure outables as Marie Forleo would say. And at the same time, not look like the weirdo kid amongst mm-hmm. their tribe, even mm-hmm. though weird is good and we embrace weird. Mm-hmm. But I know all of that, which has nothing to do with the formal parts of what you're doing, but everything to do yeah. with how you're helping them tap into the fearlessness and use their resiliency. I think, I think it is actually everything to do with it. I think, you mm-hmm. know, in this, this particular generation is, is what I call sort of the fast generation. They've had to grow up faster than we did um, in, in our day. I'm dating myself as well. <laughs> um, I think transparency is both a blessing and a curse. Um, yeah. And these, uh, this particular generation is living in an age of transparency and with that brings a lot of awareness. And so, you know, some of the skills that we kind of teach on our fearless platform. So apart from, you know, having them build the confidence enough to have sort of a video forward, you know, digital profile and really showcase their whole Mm -hmm. story in their words, which I think is the most important because the last thing I want people to do is be judged on a piece of paper and not mm-hmm. have access to those opportunities, which is why I started Fearless Plus in the first place. And so for me, I think that level of awareness and, and having these, these young people understand that, you know, yes, you're on social media and there is a way to present yourself that can be inspiring and motivating to others, which at the end of the day, we want that to happen on platforms like ourselves. And so um, that's really what we we want to, to have them get out of it. But at the yeah. same time, we understand that you want to be authentic. This particular mm-hmm. generation is all about authenticity. Stay true to yourself. Your weirdness is actually another employer's gain, right? Yes. Like maybe they want you to be super, you know, analytical, or they want you to be X, Y, and Z, or they want that, you know, esoteric project that you might've worked on that nobody cares about, but that is actually deeply meaningful to someone. And and they say, this person can really do this job really well. And so kind of figuring out, it's almost like um, finding those diamonds in the rough and our platform is really allowing sort of the shine of those diamonds to, Mm -hmm. um, to be uncovered. Um, And that's what we're helping these young people do. By the way, like this is all about you know, it, every time I talk to a parent, it's it. They always tell me, "I wish I had this when I was growing up," and right. and we get that feedback all the time. Only because if you think about what you know, what young people need, and what you know, even older people need in this type of market or this type of environment, yeah. it's really about. Um, those soft skills that are coming across. Think about when you get hired, right? You can learn the job. Mm -hmm. If you, let's say someone says, you know what, Nikita, let's make you a data scientist. You can go to a a coding boot camp and you can figure out how to code. That'll, that'll be fine. But can you work in a team? Mm. Can you communicate details of this project in a way that everybody understands you? Are you able to inspire do you know who you are and what you bring to the table authentically in order to manage other people on your team? Are you able to collaborate? Are you able to deliver things and take accountability? Are you able to do it with grit? So things like that are the things that we want to emphasize. Yeah. And it's almost thinking about how do we disrupt the school system in that way, right? How do we disrupt what you know schools really teach 
kids what to think and not how to think. And that's right. what we're there for. We want to teach them how to think so they can stand on their own. They can even help their parents, you know, in that respect and vice versa. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what I hear you, I'm very visual. So I'm like seeing it in color and all the things that you're saying. And it, I literally saw the power of fearlessness in your examples of those, which is always an interesting term, the soft skills, which are really the leadership skills, but mm-hmm. we call them soft because they have more feminine energy to them, which is a whole hilarious mm-hmm. thing because we are the ones that rule the world. But anyway, <laughs> True. Um, right. <laughs> that part. I, I really appreciate this because I also hear you using resiliency again without using the word in those examples. All of those things show up when someone has to be able to communicate yeah. in a way that people who think different, that may be neurodivergent or whatever the case may be, can hear them without judging them, without standing in their ego, without feeling like they're being judged, but being able to relay the message, let alone the teamwork and all the other kind of components of managing up and managing down that Mm -hmm. you were discussing. That's extremely powerful, like very powerful. And I can see why people are saying like, where was this when I Mm -hmm. was, was at that age? Cause God knows I could have used this too. Um, (laughs) So many levels. So I'm curious as you were creating this platform, which sounds like it has a lot of like, Femtech, fintech, and some other things kind of buried into the mm-hmm. platform in and of itself, just kind of pulling the layers back, pushing it aside for a second and stepping behind the curtain, like visually and, and literally, how are you, the woman, the mama, the human, the potent human behind the curtain balancing doing this incredibly new startup with yeah. all the other wonderful hats that you successfully unapologetically also wear? Yeah. It's, I have to say it's, it's been (laughs) at this point in my life, it's probably been the hardest, but Mm -hmm. the most rewarding, Mm -hmm. um, because this is the, this is my third venture. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, you know, I, I got to learn from my previous ventures. Um, I've got to learn from all my corporate jobs and Mm -hmm. all of all all of those roles that I held um, in addition to being a mom. And that's why it's so different this time. Um, Because, you know, I I have a a almost teen son. And so Mm -hmm. I feel everything that I'm doing in this, I have him in mind and I have all the kids his age you know, around the world in mind, like, what is that generation about to embark on? Um, But, you know, coming back to kind of, you know, it's hard, right? It's hard to balance. And I think balance is a really interesting word, because I don't think that at any given time, I'm in balance. And that's okay. Interesting. Meaning, Meaning, it's okay that um I think, Overall, you know, Mm -hmm. when you see sort of the ebbs and flows, you'll Mm -hmm. see that that sort of line that cuts across. Mm -hmm. But I have to say, if I am on fire in one, I'm definitely, you know, pretty low on another. And what I mean by that is, you know, I'll have days where I'm traveling and I'm making all these awesome, you know, keynote speeches or I'm meeting with clients or I'm selling the platform or, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm doing these interviews and such. And so then what that's fire for me. And Mm -hmm. then what's low is my family takes a back seat and Mm -hmm. I don't have dinner with my son and I don't get to check in on his homework and I don't, you know, and I don't get to spend time quality time with my husband or, Mm -hmm. you know, all that. And so I feel like, you know, I don't want particularly women you know, walking around thinking that there is this, you know, really perfect balance, but I want them to accept that imbalance is okay. Not for an extended period of time. You get to pick and choose, you know, when things kind of go on fire and, you know, and, and, you know, kind of pull back. Right. So I experienced a little bit of burnout over, the ho- leading up to the holidays. And mm-hmm. so we took a week off. We went to London. It was super festive. I didn't take calls. I was just completely engrossed in my family. And then when I got back, things were back up again. And I feel like that, you know, 
taking a step back, refueling, recharging is great, but I don't want the misnomer of balance out there where, you know, even when, when people see, oh, she has a successful career and she's a family and this and that, (laughs) like I'm juggling all the time. And what you see is I feel like I'm a duck above water, but pedaling really fast, Mm -hmm. you know, underwater. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's okay. At least yeah. for me, right? And and you know, you shouldn't feel bad about it because I have mom guilt and I have career guilt and I have all kinds of guilt. Yeah. Um, but you know, you you deal with it with the wins that you have and, and you kind of take things as they come. Oh my goodness. You said <laughs> so many things that it's really hard for me to address in the time that we have because, you know, I'm a balance and relationship yes. advisor. So yes. this is extra hilarious on so many <laughs> levels. But you pointed out something. We call it the burn zone. Like when you talked about being in fire mode, like in a good way, guys, mm-hmm. for anyone who's just like coming in in the middle, the the positive burn of like, yes, I'm in my zone. I'm doing my thing. I'm in my gift. I'm imprinting in the next generations of the world that feels so perfect in mm-hmm. that moment. And I, I say perfect cheekily because I don't mm-hmm. think you're anything's perfect until you're under the ground and you can't make any more mistakes, but leave that as it may, because we don't want anybody to be under the ground before right. their time. But that fire that you're in should be to your point in moderation mm-hmm. because you need that other time to kind of refuel. So when you go back into the fire, you, your flame can be as bright and as fearless mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. powerful mm-hmm. as, as possible. With that said, the perspective that I teach around balance, because I get this a lot, like there's no such thing, it's harmony, it's integration, is there's a formula. It's T over B, which I know that your tech mind will so appreciate the equation. The T is admitting the truth of what you really want in the world, what Mm -hmm. you want to give, what you want to gift, and what you want to receive over the B, which is the boundaries that you create to achieve that truth as your reality. You're living in your truth. So when you look at that as it's not a 50, 50, 70, 30, any of that, and you see the perspective of like, I'm literally doing what I was here to do. And I've had many ventures to get to this point to qualify me for this moment that I'm in right now a gift that the next generations that come out of my children's children and beyond could never even understand. And hopefully they won't have to in the way that I've done it because my husband and I have done the thing for them so they can make their own mistakes and Mm -hmm. in a safer, more loving world than maybe you and I was able to grow up in. You are living your, you can have it all. And from the clinical side of my brain, kids only need 20 minutes of quality time. Mm -hmm. 20 minutes changes their world as long as they have evoked feeling in that moment. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I agree with you. We started our company 12 years ago. So my adult kids were younger and it was really, really challenging. The things that they remembered were the things when I was super present just for that moment. Mm -hmm. And then I could go off and and do the damn thing, like whatever the damn thing was, but I just had to not multitask in that moment with them when we were playing Legos or, dealing with heartbreak or whatever that was in the moment for 15 to 20 minutes, even though I was with them for four to six hours pretending to care about these other soccer moms problems, which I didn't in that moment because their problems were not my problems in that I'm trying to, you know, eat what I make as an entrepreneur, right? Like, you know, you don't eat if you don't make it. That's and right. they were talking about wine and wine coolers. It was just a very different yeah. world. So I hear you saying that you're living in your truth and your perspective around it was a, what the patriarchy would say is balance, which is yeah. a really interesting yeah. point, which I think is well, fantastic. I'm such a nerd and I love your equation because that, the formula, I'm all about Very formulas. Nice. We, I have a formula for fearless as well, which I'm happy to share with you, but, yes. like, but the truth over, over boundaries. And I'll just speak to that for just one second. And then I can yeah. tell you about my nerdy formula, but um, please do. This was the year that in my truth, I set quite a bit of boundaries and, and I learned how to say no, because I was very much a, you know, being a client centric transactional person in my day job, my corporate job, you had to say yes to everybody because that's just the the nature of the the game. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And this year, because I'm on a mission and I have finite amount of time, whether it's for my business, whether it's for my family, whether whatever it is, I've been more of a hardliner on those boundaries. Yeah. And, you know, I do say no to the courtesy calls. I do say no to, you know, a lot of the things that I just don't have capacity to do. Mm. And, you know, it took a little while to get over that because there's that guilt that comes in again. Um, but I am so much better for it, right? Because I'm a better CEO. I'm a better yes. mom. I'm a better, all of those things. And I think the people that are listening are like, no, I can't do that. And mm. I think the simple answer is just try it once and then repeat and see mm -hmm. how you feel and keep going with it. Um, so I think I love that formula. I'm definitely going to, I'm telling you right now, I'm borrowing it. I will Take credit it. you with it, but I will absolutely <laughs> borrow that formula. Um, and for us, right? Like I came up with, with our formula. So uh, my whole sort of being right now is all about empowering that next generation yeah. and, and my whole sort of, you know, self um, between my career and what I've always done for people, whether it's young or, or, you know, people with positions or, you know, people in, in power positions, um, I just want to be their Sherpa, right? So mm -hmm. I want to be the Sherpa that helps them climb their mountains to success. Yes. And so being that guide and being able to advise them and counsel them and entertain them and, you know, all of these things and give them that little confidence in order to climb that mountain is what we're all about. And so, you know, that, that, I really think about what is success and it's success mm -hmm. is obviously different for, for, for everybody. But in our, in my mind, there is a formula for success. And if you have this formula, you're successful both professionally and personally. And so our formula is EQ, which is emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. um, RQ, which is rationality quotient. You have to be rational. You have to, you know, think about things in, um, coming from that, from that way. Um, AQ, which is adaptability, because that rigidity that I talked about is going mm -hmm. to do you more harm than good if you aren't able to be, you know, fluid in those situations. And then IQ, it's just something that you're born with, right? And so if you put that together, um, those are the, that adding those things up, and again, they may not always be in balance, but mm -hmm. adding them up yeah. leads to a very successful progress. Um, for example, emotional intelligence, let's just talk about that. There's a PhD study by Berkeley um, that said people with higher emotional intelligence over their peers are 400% more likely to be successful. They are also more likely to out earn their peers by $29,000 at the onset. Now imagine if you were out earning your peer by 29,000, what that looks like 10 years from now. You know, on an exponential basis. And so when we talk about emotional intelligence, it is about your communication skills. It is about, you know, um, knowing yourself and others. For me, I always want to be able to tell people, um, be a little bit of a chameleon. Mm -hmm. I know your audience, right? You have this type of energy. I have to be able to match that energy. If I am right. rigid, you and I are not going to gel and vibe, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's being in that state of high mm -hmm. emotional intelligence and, and, and kind of listening to your intuition um, and putting yourself out there, which is why, like, I think, you know, having an, and coming back to like my passion of this, this fearless plus is that you wouldn't be able to see that if it wasn't on video, if you didn't know my whole story, if you didn't know anything about me and you saw if, if I turned in my black and white bio to you, you'd be like, okay, this is, she's interesting, I guess. <laughs> right? right. I guess she could be. <laughs> right. Um, and then you see someone like this in, in, you know, this sort of more multidimensional way, yeah. um, which is what we want for everybody. Now you're so on point. In so many ways, like our process for choosing our guests is, of course, it involves professional stalking. The bio has to speak, right? That's the IQ and mm -hmm. a little bit of the AQ, you mm -hmm. know, based on what you said is described in the way it's very well written, put together, highlights those things that spike you to say like, oh, this is interesting. But then we go further and we check you out across, you know, your TikTok, your Instagram, your YouTube, right? Like, right. okay, is this person a reflection of what he or she or they 
are talking about, they're mm-hmm. teaching, they're showing up. Are they really resonating with the people that they claim Uh that they're serving? And of course you were like, yes, 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 yes. Like you checked all the boxes. And that was something that happened because we went a little step further, right? Mm -hmm. Like we did a little bit more than the average, which is what you're doing through Fearless. You're not just saying, are you 13, right? Right. Like, you know, are you 13 and you want to figure out how to get a better ROI if you're not going to college when you finish school in what, four or five years based on Mm -hmm. when they graduate. So I appreciate all of that. And you are a reflection of what you are teaching, preaching, selling, and talking about, not only for the youth that your heart is so anchored to serving and helping in such a personal and Mm -hmm. exponentially meaningful way to so many other generations who aren't related to you, people in the world who aren't related to you, but also because what you're doing actually helps the current generation too. It's helping these mm-hmm. parents. And for some, depending on the age of the grandparents, yeah. their grandparents as well. Mm-hmm. Like you said a little bit earlier, the kids will be able to add value mm-hmm. to their parents who are also navigating this marketplace of uncertainty. That's the best way that I could say that. Yeah. There's a lot of ambiguity. And I think that um, what we are trying to do will span multiple generations, right? I mean, that is our, if you, if you think about us in sort of three words, we want to be, you know, LinkedIn meets TikTok meets masterclass. Mm. And, you know, if, if we think about it that way, I just want to get to a point where, you know, everybody sees the value in it. Right. And like I said, every parent is like, I wish I had this when I was growing up. And I think infusing these sort of values, um, in, in the younger generation and then sticking with us is, is sort of our end goal. Right. I I think that it's hard for them to see the value now, um, but they'll appreciate it in, in hindsight. On on so many levels. And I think, you be surprised at how many of, and maybe not because this is your world, but I know a lot of preteens and teenagers that are absolutely fixated on what are they going to do when they quote unquote grow up, which they think is in five years because they think people yeah. in their thirties are like seniors. Yeah. But <laughs> well, and that's real. the thing. You're you're absolutely mm-hmm. right. You know, like mm-hmm. I said, it's sort of the fast generation, but mm-hmm. I think it's this it's this time where they need to experience how to adult. And Mm. we are trying to create a safe space to adult for them, right? Because, you know, think about it when you were a teen, right? You're like, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I, you have all of these preconceived notions of what you're Mm -hmm. going to do and how you're going to do it. And life just doesn't turn out that way, right? Like I definitely, you know, had some lofty, weird, ridiculous, you know, notions, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, And like I said, it's a very crooked career path, right? I mean, I thought I was going to be an investment banker. I wanted to work on Wall Street. And then when I got into my first technology consulting role, I'm like, this, this is it? This, this is not for me, you know? Mm -hmm. And I quickly realized, and I I think I was luckier than, than others in that I was able to understand or play to my strengths very early in life. And I think that's, that's one of the big things where... Parents, if you're listening out there, um, pay attention to what your what your kids' strengths are and play to their strengths. Don't be again so rigid about you have to go to college and you have to do this and you have to become a doctor and so on and so forth. If your child is artistic and if your child is really into media, yep. guess what? They can be a marketing technologist for a startup and maybe get equity in the company and become a billionaire, right? Like, so, like there are so many things. And the thing is, most parents just don't know what they don't know because Mm -hmm. they've conformed to conventional wisdom. And I think it's, it's, it, and this is where I get so fired up in that. I want to tell people like play to your strengths, you know, and, and that's why, like, even on our platform, we tell these students to take a personality assessment because first Mm -hmm. of all, just freaking understand what your personality is. Are you an extrovert or an introvert? Let's start from there. 
Right. Do you like talking to people or do you not like talking to people? Great. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. then let's peel back more layers. Let's peel back whether you're a thinker or a feeler or a judger or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And so knowing that you can play to your strength. Why am I so successful in executive search and recruiting? Because I play to my strengths. I'm very intuitive about people. I understand people. I gain their trust. I build their confidence. They trust me as a confidant. Those are my strengths. But if you ask me to write a project plan in detail, forget it. Like you might as well give me, I don't know, <laughs> like uh, calculus and something else, even though I was right. pretty good in math, but I don't enjoy it. Yeah. Don't tell me to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. And so I think that that's what people don't understand that it's okay. Like you will have strengths and lean into them versus like trying to say, fitting yourself into, I must be an engineer. Well, if you're not analytical, I don't think you should be an engineer, right? That part. Or if you're, if you're an extrovert and you have engineering capabilities, guess what? You will make the world's best, you know, marketing person because you understand the product, but nobody's ever told you that. Mm, 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 mm. So. Yeah, listen, you just described so many of my clients. I'll say that <laughs> with these beautiful backgrounds that really just had to mm-hmm. figure out life because they were, as you said, stuck in conventional wisdom, which wasn't serving them mm-hmm. well. And of course, showed up from the bedroom to the boardroom, which is mm-hmm. my special place. Yeah, right. um, very different conversation than we we're having about the youth people. But I, I hear you completely. I have to ask you because you said so many things and dropped so many gems. The curious part of me wants to know, how are you giving yourself permission to pause? Mel, why do you ask all the tough questions? (laughs) Um, I'm playing to my strength, Dupali. That's what you told me to do. You you really are. Um, (laughs) You know, I... I do give my, so, you know, I, it's the small things for me. Um, my permission to pause is making sure each day in the morning, I have that one cup of coffee that I absolutely need savor. I don't talk to anybody during that time. It's my one moment in time that I just, I look forward to it. Honestly, I look forward to my one Nespresso cup of coffee, a plug for <laughs> Nespresso. Um, I, 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 there's no sponsorship here. Um, but not it's yet. Just, no, not yet. But it's, <laughs> it's this one moment. And so that permission to pause is like that when I'm, when I'm taking that, that morning cup of coffee, I just kind of think about everything around me. And it's probably the most open I am with myself and Mm -hmm. not just going through my day, but it's really just like what's on my mind from like a 30,000 foot level to like a three foot level. And I think that that's, that's my permission. That's my permission daily. I love that. This spaciousness that you create in that five to 20 minutes, whatever it is that you're Mm -hmm. taking and that spaciousness allows you to fuel so you can get into the fire mm-hmm. and be fearless. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> do more than. That's right. Right? Deepali, how can people connect with you, the great things you're doing with the Fearless Plus platform and your community? Oh, well, uh, thank you. Uh, everybody can um, reach me. I'm, I'm big on LinkedIn. So if you want to find me on LinkedIn, it's just Deepali Vyas. And uh, the company is fearlessplus.com. We have, uh, we're everywhere on social media. So Instagram, TikTok, um, and Facebook, but it's uh, Fearless Plus. You just spell it out. Uh, and for myself, it's just deepali.vyas at fearlessplus.com. But you can find me on all kinds of social media. Very open. Um, please feel free to ping me. And I'm, I'm always trying to be helpful. I have my boundaries, but I'm absolutely willing to help, um, you know, in need. So I know that's right. Do you hear that, y'all? She's living <laughs> her truth. That's why she got those boundaries. So make sure <laughs> you keep that in mind. I like you more and more with every Thank second you. that goes. Thank you 
for carving out time from your day doing the angelic work <laughs> that you are truly doing this, says the mama of 22 and 26 year olds. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much because it's, it's necessary and well, I appreciate you. I'm honored and um, equally thankful to you. And with gratitude, we appreciate, you know, uh, being on your platform and having you giving us a voice. So um, thank you for that. You're welcome. Mm, balance boldly listeners. What did I tell you? 2023 was all about these complete full circle moments where you get to stare at the miracles that you've helped create in some way, shape or form, even the ones that you dreamt up. So if you were listening to this and you were dreaming of a possibility of getting on the other side of this transition you were in, well, this was the episode for you. Am I right? Make sure that you share this with at least one person in your circle of reciprocal influences. I want you to think of that person who's a mama, an auntie, a neighbor, who's always watching the the babies down the street. That person that you know just wants the next generation to be better and to know that they have a role in that person's life. Please share this episode and make sure you yourself follow fearlessplus.com. Outside of that, I want you to do what I ask you to do every single week, which is enjoy the balance of your day, but remember, do it boldly.